the A-10 Thunderbolt 2 takes... <clears throat> takes off in Warth... Ugh, fine. By the mid-1960s, it was obvious to American generals that the United States needed a dedicated, modern close-air support aircraft. Up to that point, the casserole was filled by planes such as the A-1 Sky Raider and the F-105 Thunder Chief. The A-1 was showing its age, and when the F-105 went on to perform poorly in the Vietnam War, being withdrawn because of operational combat losses, it put a new sense of urgency into the development of the AX program, which eventually led to the A-10. The development of the plane took years, and a few competing designs were offered, but when the YA-10 prototype flew off against the YA-9 in the early 1970s, the new aircraft's potential was immediately obvious. The A-10 was built around the 30mm GAU-8A Avenger cannon, which is capable of firing about 4,000 rounds per minute from an internal ammo drum. Most of the aircraft's front section was literally designed around the cannon, with the front landing gear being offset to the side and internal equipment and iron ballast being shifted around to maintain the plane's center of gravity. Now, the A-10 design has a number of features which, which make it kind of unique, or at least quite rare, among modern-ish military combat aircraft. It has two turbofan engines mounted externally, similar but smaller than those used on a commercial airliner, and the pilot sits behind a bathtub-shaped set of titanium armor. By the late 1980s, some Air Force generals were growing skeptical about the need for a dedicated close-air support jet like the A-10, as the Cold War started to wind down and they were considering replacing it by modifying early model F-16s to fill the close-air support role. Well, after the A-10's impressive combat record in the first Gulf War, those plans were abandoned, and the A-10's invaluable service in its dedicated niche far, far outperformed any expectations. Today, the A-10 still flies, and there are currently no plans to replace it. What we have in War Thunder are two versions. The premium A-10A, in rank 6 at BR 9.7, and the Tech Tree A-10A Late in rank 7 at BR-10. Both are classed as strike aircraft. The A-10's weapon system doesn't include a radar set, but it has a full ballistics computer for all of its weapons, and the A-10's pilot gets night vision goggles, which I'll talk more about later. The primary difference between the two are the weapon loads. Now, this is a little awkward. As of this video going live, I have confirmation from the developers that these loadouts are basically placeholders, since the custom loadout system will be going live very soon, and the A-10 will be one of the first aircraft to use it. So, I'm going to focus on the weapons themselves, rather than the current loadouts on the planes. Now, along with the usual assortment of dumb bombs and unguided rockets, the aircraft also get some guided munitions. Now, the A-10 only gets one air-to-air -air missile, but it's a good one, the AIM-9L. This is an all-aspect IR-guided missile with very good range, 30 Gs of pull, and a full minute of seeker time. On paper, the A-10 only carries these for self-defense, but, well, all-aspect 30 G missiles as low as BR-9.7, so yeah, these can be a little aggressive if needed. The premium A-10 can carry the GBU-8 TV-guided bomb. This is a very effective and accurate weapon if used from high altitude, but just remember it can take a while to reach the ground, and sometimes targets are going to move. The premium A-10 also gets the AGM-65B, which is a TV-guided version of the Maverick anti-tank missile. This weapon usually is going to need a direct hit to pop a target, and it can occasionally have problems hitting things that move too quickly. But the upside is that it's generally pretty accurate when it tracks right, and it's got respectable range. The Tech Tree A-10 gets the AGM-65D, which is an infrared-guided version of the Maverick. 
Now, despite having an identical warhead and basically the same range and flight, you know, flight performance, this ends up being a pretty significant upgrade. The IR guidance allows the D model to track moving targets, to track targets easier, and most critically, it allows the missile to be used at night. The TV guided weapons are basically useless in night battles. It can have serious problems in bad weather, but the AGM 65D doesn't suffer from those same limitations. But of course, the main feature of the A-10 is the GAU-8A Avenger cannon. This thing, quite simply, is insane. It has a cyclic rate of over 4,000 rounds a minute, and the A-10 gets over a thousand rounds of ammo. It gets different ammo belts, but the penetration stats are all the same, just with different combinations of rounds. I've had reasonably good luck with the gun so far, and have been able to pop main battle tanks from 45 degree angle top-down shots without really a whole lot of trouble. In short, anything that you point this gun at from within, you know, a kilometer or two is just erased. And sometimes, even at longer distances, you'll be able to take out targets. The flight performance of the A-10 is basic, but generally good enough. Remember, this was designed as a dedicated close air support vehicle, and intended to operate primarily after air superiority had been achieved. So, high speed and dogfight potential wasn't really a big priority in its design. Still, the A-10 is pretty nimble, even if it's slow. If you're careful, you can occasionally win one-on-one -on -one air engagements, and the plane does turn okay at most speeds, but speaking generally, high-tiered fighters will outclass the A-10 in flight performance. Taking this thing out into air missions, well, it can work sometimes, but this really won't be its strength. Now, the AIM-9Ls are monstrous weapons when you get down tiered and they're a credible threat even when you don't. And the A-10's generous supply of countermeasures can make you kind of resistant to longer range missile shots if you're just dumping flares and chaff all over the place to prevent missile locks. But if you want to use this thing as a fighter, try to lure people in close so you can fire hose them with the Avenger cannon or try and maneuver in for the all aspect missile shots. The real issue though in air battles is that at its core, this is a ground pounder and basically every other ground-pounding strike jet is going to be faster than the A-10, and they're going to beat you to the targets, which can kind of limit your scores a bit. Well, flying the A-10 out in ground battles as close air support is the job that this thing was born for. Unlike a lot of other strike aircraft, the A-10 can be effective even with no external weapon load. Just using the Avenger cannon with the default ammo belts will still work, You'll have to get in close to use it effectively, but it works. And on a few night battles where it's a little harder to visually spot aircraft, I was able to pop four or five targets just flying out with the cannon and no other weapons. The night vision goggles can also be a huge help. And even though they're just, you know, the green monochrome regular night vision, they can make spotting helicopters much easier in night fights. And make no mistake, Air-to-air -air missiles from helicopters are a legitimate threat when you're doing gun passes. If you spawn in with external weapons, the Mavericks are the obvious choice if you want to do any standoff attacks, especially the IR-guided versions on the A-10 late. Still, even with a dumb bomb loadout or rocket pods, it can be effective if you use these weapons at low altitude. And with careful flying, you can probably get at least a couple of kills every time you spawn in with a loadout. But it's worth saying, the cannon is just such crazy fun. There were a bunch of times I flew this out with just the AIM-9Ls, even when I had the spawn points for bombs or something, and just went nuts with the guns. Just try not to laugh like a crazed maniac when you roll in on a target. Now, the last thing I want to say about flying close air support is a simple reminder to use your countermeasures. The plane gets literally hundreds of chaff and flares. And when you're over the battlefield, you should basically be dumping them constantly. The A-10 has a reputation for invincibility out in the real world that honestly just isn't justified, since in real world service, it really hasn't had to contend with modern air defenses most of the time. But in War Thunder, the 
presence of modern SPAA will be the rule rather than the exception. And everything you can do to make it a little more difficult to get a radar lock means that you survive a little longer and get more chances to vaporize things with the Avenger cannon. So, pop those flares and chaff. Visually, some people think the A-10's ugly, but I've always liked it. I kind of dig unusual looking aircraft, and the A-10's simple practical design works for me. You can get a few custom paint jobs for both versions in the game, and you'll probably be able to find something you like. Landing the A-10 is pretty easy. The air brakes are highly effective, and the plane is very stable at low speed. You don't get any kind of drag shoot, but honestly, it isn't really needed. And if you have any leftover ammo in the cannon, you can just dump it on landing for extra braking. The A-10's cockpit is simplistic and functional. You get a radar warning receiver in a very good position, and the display for the Mavericks is easily visible, and the cockpit really has excellent all-around visibility. One gripe, in real life, the A-10's cockpit is angled so that the pilot has some visibility downward ahead of the aircraft. I had to recenter my VR headset about 6 inches lower, then sit up normal to get the same effect. To close out on the A-10A Thunderbolt 2, this plane gets the legendary Avenger cannon. Along with the cannon, it gets a selection of very strong air-to-ground weapons, as well as all-aspect air-to-air missiles. Plus, it has a near-bottomless supply of countermeasures. However, it's kind of slow, and it doesn't always have enough engine power for sustained air combat. The final verdict on the A-10 is that this plane is an absolute monster in the close air support role, and can still defend itself in air combat. The Avenger cannon lives up to the hype, so call Darkstar Judy Judy and go on in for guns. As always, thanks for watching.